YouTubers and fellow riders, the Kim is back at it again in the garage cooking up another DIY for you explaining how this TPS works. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I have an 05 uh, GSX-R 750 and this is the throttle position sensor that came out of it. And this is actually a replacement one that I'm going to be putting in my bike shortly. But what the throttle position sensor is, is no more than your basic, uh, your basic potentiometer. And this is the potentiometer that you would find in your common household items such as a radio or whatnot that actually has a knob that you need to turn. And um, our TPS on the motorcycle is basically the same thing. Um, only difference is, is we don't have the knob to turn it, but yet we have some other way of actually uh, moving around the little wiper blade that's in here. Um, if we take a closer look on the inside of this, and here's a little diagram I drew for you guys, and we're looking at the throttle position position sensor just like this okay we have our contact points we've got three contact points which you can see inside here okay and in these contact points we got our five volt source and we got our ground and then in the center one we have our signal and our signal is basically the wiper blade which travels along this contact point this wiper blade is made probably made of some type of uh, metal material probably copper and so as this is now as this as this travels up and how that travels up is by turning this little dial inside here and that is being that is being given from our throttle so as we roll back on the throttle we're increasing resistance causing this to go closer to the ground okay so as this travels up we're, we're telling the we are providing a signal to the ECM letting it know that uh, we are giving we are giving a gas and we want to go faster so let's take a look at the motorcycle and see how the mechanical is turned into the electromechanical So in the grand scheme of things, we have our throttle, and as we roll back on our throttle and give a gas, this is being translated to our throttle cables, okay? So we roll back on the throttle, the cable's pulling back on the butterfly, which is on the opposite side of the bike, and connects to here. So what we're doing is we're pulling back on the throttle, and this is now moving. And I probably can't get it to move because I can't see really good. There we go. So down. So we're pulling back on the throttle and it's rolling back. But we're also moving a linkage which travels through our throttle bodies, okay, to the other side. And we can find that we can find that true because if we look on this side over here, we can see where this bolt is at is where the linkage is being first begins. And it travels through our throttle bodies all through the system. Okay. So we're gonna move to the other side. At the end of the other side, we have where it, where it rests, where, where it ends. So again, we're rolling back on the throttle and this is our mechanical input or on the potentiometer, this would be us turning that little dial. Ends up at our primary throttle position sensor. Now we, have, we do have two, this one controls the secondary butterflies and this one controls our primary butterflies. And if we look inside the system, as we roll back on our throttle, we are telling the system we are letting more air in and that we want to go faster. That translates into our throttle position sensor, which now sends out, um, which is moving that dial and increasing or decreasing resistance, which is being sent out to our ECU or ECM. Now inside our ECM, we have what is known as the maps and that's a basically pre-programmed values within, within the computer that it can recognize the ECM then then translates that to our injectors, telling it, uh, giving it a pulse, and telling it how much gas it needs to feed into our engine. Okay, let's move back over here. Now sometimes the throttle position sensor goes bad, and how we tell that, and it's a problem that I'm currently experiencing right now. Um, within the TPS, um, over time, sometimes these parts wear out or maybe you just might have a faulty part. Now, inside here, I got a problem right now where uh, in the 4,000 to 7,000 in second gear only, I'm experiencing a quick blurp. I have seen a, a, maybe one 
two YouTube videos, uh, and I've done a lot of reading on other um, on other forums and sites where people are experiencing a quick this quick blurp. So as you're traveling, uh, 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 you'll get that sound, and it kind of feels like it's kind of confusing because to diagnose it, it kind of either feels like the clutch slipped or something got clogged, such as your fuel, something just got jammed in the way real quick and it cut out real quick or you just kind of lost lost power for a quick second it's so quick it's like that and, and it'll keep climbing so this is my theory and this is other people have explained this as well who have changed out the throttle position sensor due to this problem um, over time you know parts wear okay and they also get dirty since these are contact points and this is made of either brass or some type of copper or something um, contact points on the back side of this it tends to get dirty now um, or it just they just tend to wear out in these areas from from you know constantly going over and over and over again uh, you might get a, a worn spot somewhere in here and this is what I believe is causing my issue so as you're traveling through here and let's say you have a dirty contact point here and you have a dirty contact point here and as you travel through here and you get to a certain range and you touch that dirty contact point we now have lost uh, we have lost the signal or resistance within within the TPS. Now that basically goes back and tells tells the computer, uh, okay, there's no uh, I lost resistance here. So if we were traveling at 4.5, 4.6, 4.7, and all of a sudden brr, nothing, this tells the computer, okay, uh, we lost value. Uh, we lost the value here. We're decreasing uh, re decrease the gas and it basically will cut off the gas to your injectors at that point causing that quick hesitation so there are ways to troubleshoot this and that is through uh, resistance testing and I might save that for another video um, to show you how to test for that but it's basically all you do is you give your you give your uh, your TPS a 5 volt source and the ground and uh, how you do this is uh, you create yourself a coupling which connects to here which connects in between these two points okay and you test your yellow and your black wire in this system with no all you simply do is just turn on the power and you hook up your multimeter to the yellow and the black and you roll back on the throttle and very very slowly and you watch the numbers increase and if you get a skip in that number um, like I said, you suppose you're going like 2.3, 2.4, as you're rolling back, 2.5, and then you jump to 2.7. Well, what happened to 2.6? Well, apparently you got a dirty contact point at, at, in, that, in that range. Now, you got to do that test over and over again so you can watch it climb evenly. Now, beginning range is probably going to be somewhere around 1.8 uh, kilo ohms, and you're going to be measuring um, on your um, multimeter you're going to want to set to you're going to want to reset your multimeter to um, resistance and um, I forget what what dial I have this one on but at any point you can uh, put a bunch on pretty much put it on there and test in between these points and roll back on your throttle and you're going to watch these numbers slowly climb as you're rolling back and at any point if you see a number skip you know that that point inside your TPS is bad now like I said the beginning range beginning value is somewhere between 1.8 1.9 and the ending range is 4.8 okay kilo ohms and if you don't got a smooth rise in that whole thing then you know that there's a problem going on with the TPS um, it's not supposed to be jerky in any way it's supposed to run through so you gotta like I said you gotta keep going keep doing this over and over again to make sure that it travels all those numbers travel evenly all the way through now um, you will find on a, a lot of forums and stuff there people are making their own special little uh, tool I guess for the input signal and ground but you don't really need to do that I mean I have a this is another harness I had cut out from uh, uh, an extra harness I had that I purchased a while back ago just for parts and whatnot and how this basically works is, is it connects like this, okay, so this connects into there and if you look at your wiring scheme, and this, is the, this is the OEM harness, you need to basically find a way to couple these two together and be able to tap. What I did here was I basically 
cut off my harness. Here is your input signal. Here is your 5 volts voltage, and it is 5 volts, uh, by the way, that you need to input into here. And this is your ground. And when you're testing the system, um, you're going to want to connect to this yellow one, and you're going to want to connect to this black one. And since this is open, all I did was just jab this into the end, or basically into the stock harness, because this is obviously cut out. So all I did was just stick this in there, these three wires in there, and then I was able to connect up to here, but yet still tap into these wires so I can read my signals. Um, you can create something of your own if you wanted to create a tester. Um, you just need to find a way um, to slide something over those those points right there. And uh, you can probably pick those up at probably your local electronic stores, but something like this or another where um, you know, you buy some, some wire leads that actually have, uh, I see if I can get that on there, uh, probably not, um, a way to slip it over the terminals inside the TPS. So, and then you'll be able to make your own. But that's a quick explanation, fellas, uh, how this works. And I hope this helped you out. Hope this gave you a little better understanding of what the TPS is. Um, and uh, as far as what it does in the whole system and how you can diagnose some issues with that. Um, I might be doing a quick video pretty soon about how to adjust the TPS, uh, but I'll be getting back to you on that one. As always, folks, hit the like button if this helped you out. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next problem.